Okay, welcome back. Today I am going to cover uh, maybe the most difficult concept that you're going to have to know for your RBT exam. Um, I would say differential reinforcement is the other most difficult concept, but stimulus and response generalization uh, just gives people a lot of trouble. So I'm going to try to clear it up for you. Uh, we're going to go through uh, examples, questions, um, everything I can do to get you to start understanding this concept. Okay. So if you're enjoying my videos, please like and subscribe. If you need study materials, uh, check out our website or uh, one of these links, which I'll put in the comments and descriptions below. Um, keep studying hard. Any questions, email me, leave a comment. Um, I'm happy to help. So let's get started. Okay. Start here. Stimulus first response generalization. Okay. You want to picture this diagram in your head. So on the left, we have stimulus generalization. Okay. We have a single response of grabbing a handful occurring across multiple stimuli. Okay. So we're generalizing across stimuli. I can grab a handful of Cheetos, a handful of Skittles, a handful of chocolate almonds. Okay. So when you think stimulus generalization, think multiple stimuli. Okay. Response generalization is kind of the reverse of that, right? You have a single stimuli. So let's say your friend and you display multiple responses. Okay. In the presence of that stimuli. And in this case, they're functionally equivalent. Okay. So you can say hi, you can say hello, you can say what's up. So when you think response generalization, think multiple responses. Now, this is a very simple way to break this down. Okay. And we're going to get into some more technical stuff. So don't worry about the intricacies and the technicals yet. Okay. And in general, my advice for the RBT exam <clears throat> is to not bog yourself down with the technicalities, okay, and the real technical stuff. You want to just think stimulus generalization, okay? You want to think multiple stimuli. Response generalization, you want to think multiple responses, okay? And if you can picture this in your head, all right, it's going to make things a lot simpler on you. It's going to make your life a lot easier, okay? So look at this a few times and try to just really ingrain it, okay? So let's get into a few more specifics, right? So what is a generalization? Okay, what is it in the first place? It's relevant behavior happens under different untrained conditions. So we teach a behavior in a setting, in a clinic, or a house, or wherever you're teaching, a classroom. That behavior goes out to the world, right? So you teach a student uh, the color red, they go out in the world and they can identify red fire trucks and red fire hydrants, red stop signs, red everything, right? That, that trained behavior is now uh, happening under multiple conditions, okay? It's one of the most important concepts in ABA. If we're not generalizing, we're not doing our jobs correctly, okay? It does us no good to teach a behavior, but it only can be done in the environment that we taught it in, okay? We need them, we need our clients, our students, okay, to be able to do these behaviors away from us, away from a contrived environment, okay? Because that's how the real world is, right? When you learn a, when you learn a skill or a behavior, think about uh, instances of when you have a skill or you, you're learning a skill um, and you're good at it, and then you get in front of a crowd, right? Or you get in front of a different environment. And all of a sudden, you can't do it. What happened? Well, you failed to generalize, okay? And that's the idea of generalization. Generalization should be planned for, okay? The old idea of train and hope, where we would train up a skill, and we would just hope that it would generalize is, is outdated. We should now plan for it, and we should program for it, and we should teach generalization, okay? So generalization can occur across subjects, people, behaviors, time, and settings. Couple of quick questions. Which of the following concepts are part of skill acquisition? Is it A, learning the behavior, B, generalizing the behavior, and C, maintaining the behavior? Well, it is D, all of the above, 
Okay. When we're teaching a skill, we have to teach the skill. So they, the behavior needs to be learned. We then want to generalize that behavior. Okay. And then finally, we need to make sure that behavior is maintaining. So once we stop teaching it, has it persisted? Okay. Can the learner still do the behavior? Okay, so all of these are important concepts in skill acquisition. The idea that a learner will generalize their behavior if we wait long enough is known as what? Is it programming for generalization, training and hoping, train loosely, or programming common stimuli? Well, programming for generalization is what you want to do, right? Because in that case, we're not just waiting, right? So A is wrong. What about C? Train loosely. Okay, train loosely is a concept um, that BCBAs learn, okay, um, when we talk about generalization. So C and D, right, training loosely and programming comma stimuli are BCBA ideas where we actually program this into our, our uh, plan, okay? We want to teach them to generalize. In two ways we do that is training loosely and programming comma stimuli, okay? But waiting, just waiting around and hoping that the behavior just magically happens in other situations, okay? That is called training and hoping. It's outdated and it's something we should not do anymore. So back to our original point, stimulus generalization, right? What is stimulus generalization? Think multiple stimuli, okay? Untrained or new stimuli evoke the same response as a trained or known stimuli, okay? So you taught a response in the presence of a stimuli. You taught grabbing a handful, okay, of something in the presence of hot Cheetos. Now, the, stimuli, the stimulus Skittles evokes that response. The stimulus chocolate almonds evokes that response, okay? So these untrained or new stimuli are evoking the grab a handful response, okay? Multiple stimuli evoke the same response. Now, think about stimulus generalization and overgeneralization, okay? What if your client starts grabbing a handful of ants, right? A handful of stuff they shouldn't be grabbing a handful, okay? So generalization is good, but then we just have to, right, differentially reinforce, right? Then we have to teach, okay, what's appropriate and not, right? Hopefully all these concepts are starting to come together for you, okay? And you can see how they all work together. So again, stimulus generalization, think multiple stimuli evoking a common response. Response generalization. Stimuli of your friend, for example, evokes, hi, hello, what's up? So response generalization, think multiple responses occurring under the presence of one stimuli. Untrained or novel responses that serve the same function occur in the presence of a stimulus, okay? So typically these responses that are occurring are untrained <clears throat> or novel, okay? They don't need to look the same, right? They don't need to sound the same, okay? but they're all occurring, right, in the presence of the stimulus, okay? So in this case, right, you taught your client to say hi to their friend, and now your client says hello and what's up. So they have all these similar functioning responses in the presence of one stimuli. So when you think response generaliza generalization, think multiple responses. All right, couple questions. Your client has started to say dog, in the presence of a dog. Your client now says dog when he sees a wolf, a cat, and a giraffe. What is this an example of? Is it response generalization, stimulus generalization, shaping, or training and hoping? <clears throat> well, it's not training and hoping because we're not tra training anything, okay? Our client has now started to generalize in some form, right? They're seeing a, a learned dog, now they see a wolf and a cat and a giraffe, and they say dog in all these situations. So we're not shaping or training and hoping, we're generalizing. Now, what is our rule, right? Response generalization, we think multiple responses. Stimulus generalization, we think multiple stimuli. Do we have multiple responses or multiple stimuli here? Well, our only response is saying dog, okay? But we have multiple stimuli of wolf, cat, and giraffe. Therefore, what? we have stimulus generalization. That response of dog is occurring in the presence of dog, wolf, and giraffe, okay? The key to this exam 
besides knowing your terms and definitions, okay, is getting yourself to a point where you're remembering these concepts, okay, um, and applying them. You have to be able to apply these concepts to situations like this, okay? So again, best way to answer this question is asking yourself, are we looking at multiple responses or multiple stimuli? And we were looking at multiple stimuli, okay? The response of dog is occurring under dog, wolf, cat, and giraffe. Okay, you go to Popeyes for a chicken sandwich. Sometimes you pay with cash, sometimes you pay with card, and sometimes you pay with Apple Pay. This is considered what? Response generalization, stimulus generalization, shaping, training, and hoping. Again, it's not shaping, training, or hoping, right? We're generalizing. So, are we multiple responses? Okay. Or multiple stimuli? Well, when do you pay in response to what? And the response to seeing a total, right? Or a bill or a check. Do we have multiple responses here? And this is where it gets hard with response gen generalization. I think response generalization is harder, right? Um, because people get it confused with the same response, right? But you got to be real careful and specific here. When we're paying with cash, we're paying with card, and then we're paying with Apple Pay. So let's say we taught the client to pay with cash in response to a bill, right? If paying with card in response to the bill, the stimuli hasn't changed, but has the response changed? Yes, the, the, the function is still paying, right? We're still getting our, we're still, we're still removing the need to pay, right? So the function is the same, but the response is different. You're paying with card, right? It's novel. You're paying with Apple Pay. There's multiple responses to it, okay? So in that case, it's, it's response generalization, right? Our total was a stimulus of 495. We pay with card, we pay with cash, we pay with Apple Pay. Okay. This is this is a tricky, these are tricky concepts. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I think, in my opinion, when you're learning the ABA exam or the RBT exam, you should focus on everything and you should do differential reinforcement and stimulus and response generalization last. It's just my opinion. I think they're hard. Okay. I think they're hard to grasp, the hard concepts to grasp, especially response generalization. I think it's a hard concept to grasp. Okay. So if it's confusing you, don't get overwhelmed, learn everything else, and then come back to this. Okay. That's my advice. So I hope that helps. I hope that clears some things up. Okay. Um, remember, like, and subscribe. More videos coming next week. Um, if you need our study materials, check out our website or check out one of the links, which I will put in the comments and description below. Keep working hard. Okay. Um, it's going to pay off. Any questions, leave comments, leave, leave, email me. I'm happy to help. As always, study hard, and I will see you again soon.